Hello, YouTube Baseheads. Today, let's talk about port placement. Now, most of you probably already know that if you've got uh, just a box in the back and your subs are on top, that uh, you want your port kind of firing out the back towards the back hatch. I'm not exactly talking about that type of placement. Yes, every vehicle is going to be a little bit different. It's going to like port placements in different locations. Some people even have the ports firing up and so on. I'll go ahead and clear that. And that's not exactly what I'm talking about today. So, what am I talking about? Well, let's strictly look at a uh, a box. We're not even going to consider the car. And yes, the port in the car is is huge and it's it's a big deal. But today, I want to just talk about the port on the box and we're just going to focus on that. So, let's say we're looking at the front of the box. It's an ugly drawing. But the front of the box, you've got a sub here. And let's say you've got a, we'll do a slot port. You've got a slot port right there, right next to the sub. Now, the, the type of base that's coming off of this, because the slot port, or it could be a round port, whatever, is right next to the sub, the, uh, the sound from the port and the sound from the speaker immediately mix. This gives a very uh, a sound quality. So if you if you if you're trying to do a ported box and you want sound quality, having the sub and the port on the same side next to each other help with sound quality. They immediately mix. You're not dealing with um, like stuff reverberating out through the cabin and cancellation. They immediately mix, and you have a high quality sound essentially because they're, they're, they're very much working in tandem. So you have a, a, a very quick response, a uh, little bit more punch, and uh, a sound quality. Okay. Now, let's kind of do the opposite of this. We'll go ahead and clear that. And we're going to draw, let's say you've got a subwoofer box that's long. And you do the port on the end. And then over here, you've got the sub. Now, they're on different sides. And the sub and the port are literally as far away on the box as you can get. So we went from the sub and the port being right next to each other to now the sub and the port being pretty far apart. Okay. What happens here? Now, this is, this is a little bit different. This is the kind of thing that you'd want to do if you were trying to extend your lows. So what happens is you got the base coming off of the, the sub and you've got the, the base coming off the port and these have to travel a ways before they meet. So what happens in this, if you have the same exact size box, same exact size port and everything, and let's say you're tuned at 40 hertz, with this box and with the last box, you, you, you put it on paper, you're tuned at 40 hertz. Uh, what you're going to notice is this box is going to hit a little bit lower than the other box because the base has to travel farther before it meets up with the wave from the speaker. And it's actually the sub. It's actually going to cause um, kind of a, a, a shift in, in tuning almost a little bit lower. So it's not going to be quite as uh, immediately responsive as the last box. And, and you probably, honestly, probably wouldn't even notice this too much with the ear. Uh, you're not really going to hear a lot of difference. But if you're trying to squeak out every little bit of uh, low tuning in this box as possible, then putting them as far away from each other as possible is going to give you not much. So let's say the other box, they're, you're tuning both at 40 on paper. Maybe this one actually hits at like 39. Uh, once again, not a big difference. But you're going to have a little bit more cone control below tuning with this one uh, versus the other one. So let's say, once again, you, you're, you're tuned to 39. And maybe you can play down to, oops, let's say you play down to 20 
eight with this box. And the last box, maybe you could only play down to 30 because of the difference in um, port location. Kind of interesting. Okay, I do want to talk about one other thing with slot ports real quick. Let me go ahead and clear that. Okay, so I'm going to draw a top-down slot port. I'm going to draw a couple different ports. So here's, you've got your standard circular port, arrow port, and then you've got um, a couple slot ports. Let's draw a square one. Let's draw kind of more of a slot one, and then let's do an extreme ratio slot port. Okay, how do these affect sound? Well, we already know the most efficient one is the round port. So you're going to be able to get away with a smaller port when it's round than you would with slot. Not a whole lot smaller. Um, I've heard estimates of like 40% smaller. That's I, I think if you flare this this round port, you could, you could probably do that 40%. But if you flared this square port... Um, up here, you're also probably looking at real similar performance to this round port. Very, very similar performance. It's the extreme slot port like this at the very bottom that is uh, really when you're comparing the, the round one versus the extreme slot port, is there a huge difference in size? Okay. Now... Go ahead and erase some of that. What I want to kind of focus on here, I'm going to bring up a different color marker. I'm going to go black. Okay. What I want to kind of focus here is the circle has a very small surface area that the air actually touches going in and out, which makes it super efficient. The square has a slightly bigger surface area. And the extreme port has a lot of surface area. So when that air is moving through these ports, the air drags on the port. So th there's that friction as it moves along the port. With a round port, it's it's you you have what you have is right here in the center, you've got the fastest airspeed, and then it kind of slows down towards the edges as it drags on that port. Same thing with all of these, actually. Um, but what happens is because that air, the friction is, is slowing down as it's moving across that port, uh, the air will actually move slower through one that's got more surface area. So this one right here, got more surface area. So on paper, if I tune both of these to, uh, let's say, 35 hertz, okay, the circle is going to be 35 hertz. So I use one of those calculators. Guess what? That that circles, the the circle port is going to come out with the box, and it's probably going to be very close to 35 hertz. Now, when you throw it in the car, the car is going to mess with the tuning as well, and that could adjust it higher or lower. Typically, lower um, could lower it a little bit. Now, this one is very different. I tune it on paper to 35 hertz. And it's going to be lower. So I have always had my slot ports. I typically run my slot port like this. I do a, a 5 to 1 ratio. Um, at the absolute most extreme is, is typically what I do. 5 to 1 ratio. So basically for every 5 inches long, uh, you go 1 inch high. And that's the most extreme slot that I like to do. You can get by with doing like a six or maybe a seven to one ratio. If you do that though, you got to go bigger. So um, you got to make your slot diameters um, bigger. So if let's say this was like three inches and 15 inches. Uh, actually, that's a, that's a, one to five. So let's do like three inches and 21 inches long. Uh, what you'd have to do is you'd be like, well, it's, it's not going to be big enough. And you might have to go with like a four, four by like 28 or something. You have to make that a bigger port because the air is going to drag on it so much. You're going to have a lot of chuffing sound, but 
Uh, when I do these five to one ratio ports, I have always found that I drop two hertz in tuning. So if I, if I calculate this out to 35, I'm gonna be sitting at 33 hertz. Now the square one, you might be like 34 and a half hertz. The more essentially, the more ratio you give it, the lower tuning it's gonna drop. Because that as the air moves slower, it basically acts like it's a longer tube. So it's kind of interesting. I, I love slot ports because you can you can get really creative with them and you can do kind of a lot of fun stuff with them. Um, not saying aero ports don't have their, their place. They're really great if you're trying to save room. And uh, some people swear by the sound difference. Uh, I think Hi-Fi Vega actually did a comparison of a slot port versus a round port and found that he had more dB out of a slot port at lower frequencies. And I think it's this exact this exact thing right here. So once again, let me clear, let me clear my drawing because it's getting a little busy and then um, go ahead and start again. Okay. What's also nice about the long port because once again, we talked about the air is slowing down versus a circle port. What's really nice is that as you play below tuning, this slot port doesn't act just like a big hole because that air is dragging on it. So it actually provides a little bit of resistance to the sub. That's why it plays better at lower frequencies. And that's why the slot port is partially loved by the bass head community, especially like with, um, think about six orders where they're trying to get windy. Um, they love slot ports because it, it lets them play a little bit lower and it's a little bit safer for the sub. Okay, guys, I hope that was awesome. I hope that helped. I hope that was interesting. I love you guys. Uh, I did record several amplifier videos and I, I lost the footage. It's gone. So I'm going to have to re-record those videos and get those uploaded. But until next time, guys, I hope that this, uh, this kind of was cool and interesting and you get a little bit of uh, interesting information out of um, about ports, all about ports. All right. Love you guys. Cheers.